impartida por Scott Burnell. Un aplauso, por favor. Gracias, gracias, gracias. Un siento, I'm, I'm going to do this in English. Uh, welcome to Campus Party 2016 Guadalajara. Is this a first campus party? Anybody, this is your very first one? There we go. So you're getting ready to stay up for two days, for three days, for five days, maybe a week. Very nice. It'll be fun. And, and just remember, by about Friday, take a whiff right now. It's not going to smell like this by Friday. It is going to be much, much different on Friday. So my name is Scott Brunell, and I run the developer program for Ford Motor Company. Uh, people ask us a lot, why would Ford Motor Company be here at Campus Party? Why does Ford Motor Company talk to developers, and you know, what are we doing? So we're going to be explaining a few different things that we've got going on, and how we're here to help the automotive industry as a whole, uh, the whole internet of things, and how you guys as developers really fit into that picture and how you can take advantage of what Ford has to offer and what automotive is doing to help your career, uh, to help your content, and to help you reach others. In 2013, in 2011, we launched uh, AppLink. And AppLink is the Ford product for connectivity. It was the first of its type ever launched in the automotive industry, and it allowed content that you've got with you every day to make it into the, into the car with you. Now instead of having to get into the vehicle and do something different, you can take the content that you're used to having and bring it with you. Now how does this work? It works the way that you guys are really accustomed to dealing with the world right now. It works through APIs. In the same way that an API is two different places being able to communicate with each other and having that link, AppLink does the same thing with your mobile device and the head unit. A head unit, an HMI, for those of you who are not in the automotive industry and I had to learn, the head unit is the radio. It's the screen, it's the voice button, it's all the smart parts of the vehicle. HMI is what you're gonna interact with on the vehicle, such as that voice, such as a button, such as touching that screen. So in the same way that you're used to developing apps right now, utilizing APIs and making calls, now you can do that when you get into the vehicle with your content. You don't have to place anything in the vehicle. You don't have to build new screens. You're just going to be able to take the content and what you're making for a mobile device and transfer that into the vehicle. Now you've got control of a button, whether it's the numbered buttons, one through ten, icons on a touch screen, uh, if it's a, if it's a a knob, a turn knob, and of course voice. Voice is very important when you're in the vehicle, obviously. You want to keep your eyes on the road and your hands on the wheel for as long as possible, hopefully all of the time. So utilizing voice is, is a big component of that. And with AppLink, you've got these opportunities now. The way it's going to look in a vehicle is it's going to appear that what's happening is actually happening in the vehicle. Even though you're running the content on the mobile device, it's going to look to an owner, it's going to look to a driver as if it's already in the vehicle and it's supposed to be there. You've got the opportunity now to command these buttons. You've got the opportunity to say, tell me when somebody presses the volume button. Tell me when somebody presses the voice button. And then you can write to the screen and put your own images there. You can put your own text there. You can put your own icons onto the screen. This is a capability that was never seen before in automotive. Obviously, the lead time to create an application, to build content, you guys can do that overnight. As a matter of fact, we're going to have a hackathon tomorrow night, and people will be building apps overnight. But in the automotive world, nothing happens overnight. It's about a five-year process to bring a new vehicle from concept, through engineering, to actual release and on the road. So the beautiful new 2016 Mustang that just hit the road was being created and being thought about and being developed in 2011 and 12 and 13. So in the automotive industry, it's hard to be able to put something such as a mobile application or any kind of application into the vehicle because of the lead times. You look at how far along you would have to be. By enabling developers like you guys to bring in that content that's already on a mobile device, we as Ford can maintain relevancy. We can have apps 
almost as quickly as you guys can develop them. We don't have to wait for the engineering cycle to come along and say, oh, well, that application that was developed seven years ago is no longer around and we don't have that in our car anymore. It's whatever the users are, are actually bringing in with them. So if somebody's using your app and they get in the car and it's enabled, it will work. Currently, we've got about 100 apps that have launched with AppLink around the world. AppLink launched in the United States, as I said, in 2011. In 2014 and 15, we rolled out AppLink across uh, the rest of the world, which include Mexico and Canada, South America, Europe, China, India, and Australia. So now Ford owners around the world have this same capability and developers have been coming to us in droves to try to get into the vehicle, which is wonderful. This means that now owners have this capability to get their favorite apps. Obviously some very familiar names, uh, Spotify, which is a very global name, in the US, Pandora, iHeartRadio. Uh, if you're into baseball, Major League Baseball at bat is a compatible. When we go into China, some of the biggest names in the globe are actually based in China. Baidu, for instance. Baidu has about 900 million monthly users on their, mo on their navigation app. Tencent's QQ uh, music service. 750 million people use that application every month. And these guys said, hey, we can go out and we can work with anybody that we want to. And what they determined was Ford was simple, Ford was easy to get their content into the vehicle. So they came to us first. Of these 100 applications, about 98, 97 of them launched in a Ford vehicle before they ever launched in a BMW or a GM or anybody else. Simply because of how we made it easy for them to develop and easy for them to integrate. So where we've come from, as I said, in 2011, we launched AppLink. We announced it at the uh, CES show in January and won a couple of awards there. And you can see, again, some of the apps that have come along since then. We launched with seven different applications. And as I said, we've got 100 now. So we're not as fast as the, the Apple Store. We're not as fast as the Google Play Store. We don't have one and a half million applications or almost two million applications but we've gone from seven to a hundred in five years. That 100 is actually about 60 more than all of the other automakers combined globally. In 2013, we made it a little bit simpler for developers to work with us. So we have AppLink, we've got these capabilities and these APIs. How do we embrace the developers? How do we, how do we get you guys involved? So what we did is we launched developer.ford.com, we launched catalog.ford.com, and we created an entire developer program. We understand that as a large company, we've got a lot of talented people, but we've got a lot of talented people who are working on specific things. They're actually creating the AppLink product. They're integrating that AppLink product into the vehicles so that the content will work. So what we want to do is we want to embrace innovation. And innovation comes from the developers. It's not going to come from inside Ford. And unfortunately, it's not going to come from some of our larger partners. We love Pandora. We love Spotify. But the really cool things come from the small developers, come from the independent guys or the small shops. And that's why we, we created the developer program. Now, all of the resources that we created and we set out with Pandora and we set out with Spotify we've made available to you guys as developers. When you go to developer.ford.com and you create an account, you instantly have access to the AppLink SDK, all of our development guides, our testing and validation suites, best practices, we've got uh, community forums. It's, it's a developer site, you know, you're accustomed to them, you use them. But it's the first one that was ever launched in the automotive industry. And many have tried to follow that and just simply haven't been able to do it because we take it seriously. We really do embrace developers and we want you guys to come party with us and get cool things into the vehicle. In 2014, as I mentioned, we rolled out AppLink across the globe. 
So now was it, it wasn't just available in the US, now anybody can get their apps into their cars and get their content with them wherever they go. In addition to rolling out, we actually moved up our versioning. We now have AppLink 2.0. See how exciting the 2.0 is? That, that's very exciting. It's got a little line under it. It means it's exciting. But with AppLink 2.0, we increased the capabilities. We offered more resources and tools to the developer community. Now you've got things like access to vehicle data. You can actually uh, use voice pass-through, meaning instead of having to set a, send a set of commands to the vehicle for the on-vehicle, in-vehicle uh, voice recognition, you can take raw audio and you can take it from the microphone, send it to your app, and take it off and send it to a cloud for however you want to use voice rec. You're not limited to specific commands that you have to enter into the vehicle. Um, you've now got the ability to quick launch. Instead of having to dive through menus, you can just say Pandora and Pandora will start playing. You can say Spotify. You can press the app button from pretty much anywhere at that point. We put in the ability for dynamic soft keys, meaning now you don't have, you're not just limited to what hard key is in the, bu in the, in the vehicle, you know, the number one, the forward, the pause. Now on the screen, you can dynamically change the buttons to say whatever you need them to based on the content that you're showing. So in this vehicle data that we've made, we've kind of taken a step away from how automotive industry really has moved before. We've really gone out and done something scary uh, to most of the other OEMs. We opened up the ability for a developer with a simple application to access the GPS in the vehicle. You can actually find out how much fuel is in the vehicle, get the fuel level, what's the oil life, track the odometer. You can find out things like windshield wipers, are they on, what gear is the, is the vehicle in. So now, not only are we asking you to innovate, we're, at, we're giving you more tools to innovate. We're giving you some really cool things so that you can go out and say, hey, what could I do with all of this data? What kinds of things could I create that would go into a car that would be really cool? And so some of the different things that have come back to us so far are starting to roll into vehicles. And starting to, you can see them in different applications. Um, ADT is a, uh, is a home alarm system in the United States. And one of the things that they've got is the ability to have geofencing. So think about the different things that you could really set up with GPS. And when I leave the, this example, when I leave the house, is my alarm on? You know, there, there's a lot of things that happen when you get in the vehicle that you only think about when you're in the vehicle. I call it an oh shit moment. You get in the vehicle, you drive away, and you say, uh, did I turn the alarm on? You can automate that in an application now. Or you can have it say, here's a, here's a message, here's an alert that'll pop up and say, uh, hey dummy, you didn't turn on your alarm. Did you want to do it? Because we can do that for you. Another thing that you can do, which one are we on? Oh yeah, this is the ability to track odometer. Sometimes I forget where I am. So with the odometer, there's a lot of really cool features. You know, there's business versus personal. There is how long did this trip take and how good of a driver, are they driving green? Are they taking unnecessary routes someplace? So not only can you put in a navigation route and find out where you're going, now let's find out did you go the right way for that time of day or what's a better way to go? For people who drive for business all the time, instead of having to write down your mileage at the beginning of the trip, write down your mileage at the end of the trip, have it tracked automatically find ways that you can use this content or use these features to create really compelling content. Fuel level monitoring is a no-brainer, but it's still a compelling argument. It's still amazing to think about what you can do with just being able to access the fuel level. There's a lot of apps out there that you can open and say, I'm low on fuel, where can I get gas? Where, where can I stop and get gas? But what about the idea that you can just get in the vehicle and start driving, and then the application will tell you, hey, you need to get gas, and you've got a 
rewards card for Shell or for ASO or for Exxon Mobil, and we know that you're low on fuel, how about if you stop at the next one, which is five kilometers away, and you'll get five cents off of your of every gallon or every liter of gas that you're gonna that you're gonna get. This is the kind of thing that you can build with having access to the fuel level. Now it's 2016. And now we've got this really, really cool Mustang redo. And so we've got to be able to keep up with that. You know, we've, we've got this really cool car. We've got this slick vehicle out there. So how do we keep up with that? Well, for the developers, we've created Sync 3. Okay, we didn't create it for developers, but for here, we created it for developers. Let's just say that. I'll say that. From my, from my viewpoint, we created it for developers. But now we've got something that fits in with that cool Mustang. Now we've got something that for developers is gonna offer again more features, more capabilities. Now you've got a touch screen. Now you've got a spot for applications. I'll be the first to admit on some of the older models it was hard to find your applications. But now it's right there. It's right in the screen. It's right in the tray. You could almost push up and you can almost touch it right now and it would pull up applications. So now they're right in front of you. This is this is an amazing thing. We're creating all kinds of different ways for customers to be able to find your content. Obviously ID icons are huge. This is that same thing that I spoke about earlier where the content looks like it's in the vehicle. And though you didn't have to build anything different, it appears to the driver that it's in the vehicle. They touch a nice big icon, boom, they're in your application. They're using your application in the car. We've created a bunch of different templates, whether you're a media app, a non-media app. All you're doing is really just writing to a field. You don't have to draw this. You're not creating this. We've got it done for you. There's all kinds of these things called distracted driver guidelines in every country around the world, in every region around the world, because you're driving a vehicle that goes really, really fast. And if you're not doing the things that you're supposed to be doing, that's our fault. So we are going to build the templates, and all you have to do is send the data to them. Multiple fields, multiple ways for you to get that data out to people. These different layouts, can be chosen and can be changed based on what you're going to be presenting. Different image files, different image sizes. You can utilize text. You can utilize soft buttons. That way you get to still customize and own the experience even though it's in a template, you're not limited. You're limited to the templates, but you're not limited to your imagination how you can utilize them. The ability to change on the fly, the ability to add components, the ability to add commands is something that you can't do in any other vehicles right now. Ford is the only one that, own, that allows that. So within all of these, you can now take advantage of them. You can now do things that you could never do before. So now your cool 2000 Mustang, your content comes with it. It's even cooler now. People are enjoying it. Just the fact that you've got the ability to see an application show up as an icon is all the difference in the world to an owner. As soon as you pair your phone, AppLink deep dives your phone and says, hey, how many apps here are compatible? And they all raise their hand. And then they show up on the screen. So about 30% of our forward owners who have purchased Sync 3 vehicles are finding these apps organically. That's a huge number for organic discoverability. That means that whether your app is a Spotify and is used by 80 million, 80 million people, or you've created an app that 100 people use, you're on the same screen next to them. Owners still have that capability to find and use your applications. An amazing thing that nobody else has done for developers. So I'm sure you're sitting there and you're saying, that's great, Scott. What are you doing for us now? Well, that's it. That's the end of the whole thing. I, I'm done. Oh, no, I'm not. So, in 2013, when we opened the Ford Developer Program, we did something else that kind of flew under the radar unless you were actually in the automotive industry. And if you were in the automotive industry, it, it kind of raised a ruckus. 
what we did is we took our IP, our technology, which is AppLink, and we donated it to the entire world, to the automotive industry and to the entire world. We took our product, AppLink, and open sourced it. And if you deal in open source, you understand that that means that we, we don't have our hands on it anymore. We don't control it anymore. So we made the announcement and everybody in the automotive, in automotive industry kind of said, yeah, we don't believe you. So now Smart Device Link, which we call SDL, is the open source platform on which AppLink, the Ford product, is built. So now anybody can use Smart Device Link. Smart Device Link, just like AppLink, is what we call OS agnostic. Smart Device Link is a transport, a Bluetooth transport, which doesn't care what OS is running on the device and doesn't care what OS is running on the vehicle. It's just talking back and forth. So whether you have an Android application, an iOS application, and very soon, a Windows, I know you guys are all Windows users here, I can, I can tell. Got those big phones in your pockets, yeah. It doesn't matter, matter. It doesn't matter for the OEM side either. We made a change, a very public change. We went from Microsoft in some of our older, in our older version of Sync to QNX in the, in the Sync 3. Developers did not have to change anything to, for their apps to work in a Ford vehicle. So now, this means that as open source, whether you're Ford, Honda, Toyota, anybody, you've got the opportunity to use the same code in your vehicle to talk to applications. What does that mean for developers? Obviously, the myth of write once, run everywhere is out there. We, ch we all chase that, that rabbit. This is really close. This means that as a developer, when you develop something for a Ford vehicle and it works with AppLink, once another app, one, when the other OEMs have SDL in their, in their vehicles, your application just works. We expand it. We expand it by bringing it into the other vehicles. So 2013, we launched it. We announced it. In 2015, Toyota, our wonderful friends over at Toyota, were the first to announce publicly that they were investigating SDL. They said, hey, this is, this is looking like a pretty good idea. We should, we should probably take a look. And then at CES this year in 2016, Toyota publicly announced that the SDL platform is going into their vehicles next year. So now we just went from your application can be in a cool 2016 Ford Mustang to your application can be in a cool 2016 Mustang and a 2017 Toyota, whatever they call their cars. I don't know. Um, and on top of that, there's been more and more and more interest. The other participants here in SDL have now come out and said, just like Toyota did in their first step, that they are investigating SDL as well which means that they're doing the engineering work on the back end to find out how they get it into their cars. So now you start taking a look around and you see, hey, it's, it's again, not just Ford and it's not just Toyota, but now you've got PSA cars. You have a Peugeot, a Honda, a Subaru. Your application can now work in millions and millions of cars all around the globe really, really giving you an opportunity to say, hey, I'm making an impact. My stuff is being used. And it's not just the OEMs. It's not just the manufacturers that are adopting SDL, that are in this project. The different layers of vendors in the automotive industry goes on for miles and miles and miles, and I won't bore you with it because I'm bored to death with it myself. But in essence, a platform provider can have SDL in it, such as QNX, who powers Sync 3, or UI Evolution, who powers Entune for Toyota. What in the automotive industry is called Tier 1 suppliers, such as Pioneer, Panasonic, these guys have also adopted it and are putting it into aftermarket radios, and then are also capable of then putting it into the OEM when they're ready to move. So it, 
it limit it it takes down the amount of time that when an OEM says they want to do it. So when Peugeot says we're now ready, if their supplier is on this list, it's already done for them. We're not extending. Remember how I said it takes five years to make a vehicle. We don't have to extend that. They're they're able to be nimble and almost as fast as developers are and get it into their vehicles. And why is this important, Scott? It's not important. It's important when you look at this. Our friends over in Silicon Valley aren't always our friends. We're in business, you're in business, they're in business. We make vehicles, they don't make vehicles. We've been building things in vehicles for a very long time, about 116 years at Ford as a matter of fact. We don't try to get into phones. We try to make phones get into cars. And these guys are coming out. There's a lot of third-party solutions out there. And these are two that we'll call out just because you've probably heard about them being in vehicles. And you want to ask yourself, but Scott, that's, you know, I go by hey you, but you, know, you can say, hey Scott, I've got a question. Why should we care? Why should we care? Well, you should care because as much as we love working with third-party solutions, they don't always have our best interest in mind. Ours as Ford, yours as developers. I'm sure you know, you've developed apps and if you've ever put anything into an app store, you've kind of wondered why is this kind of a pain in the butt or why don't I get all of this data or you know, why are they doing things to my app that I, you know, that I don't want to do to it? Well, we don't want that happening in the vehicle. We want to maintain control of that because again, there's distracted driver guidelines. And we also know a little bit better about what should be happening in a vehicle because we've been building them for a long time. So when you start talking about the differences, when you talk about SDL, SDL gives us the capability to offer the developers far more things than these third-party solutions because we want to embrace you and we want to make sure that the things you're gonna build are gonna be really cool in the vehicle. So many different things on the content side, where you guys are king, right? You guys know content. We're not going to try to build the apps. That's why we're partnering with developers for innovation. So we want you to bring that in. When we start talking about the vehicle data again, and all the things that we're going to give you, that's, that's our help. So you guys are going to bring the content. We're going to give you the resources and the tools and let you do cool things and build cool features. And then what's going to come out of that are the ability for us to do a lot of things around the world. We'll be able to lock hands and sing Kumbaya with everybody in the IoT world. We can say IoT all day long and what does that mean? In the vehicle world that means that we're the only part of IoT that is moving along at 110 kilometers an hour or maybe a little bit faster depending on what car you've got. We're in a very unique place in the automotive world to affect so many different aspects of IoT. Not just vehicles talking to each other, but vehicles talking to the infrastructure, the cities, the towns. Vehicles talking to people. People talking back to vehicles. We as the automotive industry take this very seriously and this is why SDL is going to keep growing among the OEMs and giving opportunities to the developers is so that when we start to come out with the IoT components, you as developers have already been working with us. You've already been creating content. You're on top of that before it becomes a standard. You can help us create that standard with your content. So in the grand scheme of it, this is where everybody sits. If you're a developer, you're going to have the content. You, you're creating the content for us. You're going to have a little bit of context into the diagnostics and into the vehicle data. Safety, I'm sorry, we're going to hold on to ourselves. We're, 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 kind, of, we're kind, of, uh, kind of brash when it comes to holding on to that. We, we want to make sure that the vehicles are, are, are very safe and that the content is very safe. But this is where you're going to be able to marry all of the things together. And the content that you create can, again, be seen by millions and millions of people in vehicles all over the world. 
And you say again, that's great, Scott, but what else is there? I'm running out of stuff, so quit asking me that question because eventually there's going to be an answer if I'm, I'm completely out of stuff. So what we're doing at Ford now is making sure that all of the things that we've put in place, and now with SDL, we've got partners to do that. So we're making sure that the things we've put in place, the SDL partners are making sure that the things that they put in place are going to be available for you, not just today, but for a long time. And they're going to be increasing in capabilities. They're going to be increasing in the features and the resources that we're going to make available to you. One of the things that we're going to do is make sure that we keep up and give you all of the resources. I mentioned that we launched in 2013, developer.ford.com. It is undergoing a complete overhaul right now to actually increase the capabilities for you as the developer. A lot of automation going in. If you've been developing for us recently, um, you know that we've got a lot of things like Excel spreadsheets and PDFs that you have to look at. We're going to be making those into um, web forms. We're going to be making it so that anything that you want to do is being taken care of for you. One of the things that we've got brand new that you can actually check out tomorrow, probably during the day, maybe about in the afternoon, is a completely overhauled emulator. You can test, you can create and test your applications right online. Unfortunately, we don't have the capability to send a 2000 Mustang to every developer. We would love to. I get asked the question all the time. Unfortunately, my paycheck definitely won't cover that. So this AppLink emulator is going to give you the ability, if you don't have a Ford vehicle at your, at your disposal, to actually go in, build your application, and test and see exactly how it will act on a SYNC 3 vehicle without ever leaving your basement or your office or your uh, campus party table, I guess, even if you really wanted to. And then that's also going to translate into the bigger SDL community. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, at a show in Detroit, we actually announced that we are, we just launched um, smartdevicelink.com. So smartdevicelink.com is going to be a central hub for developers for learning about the core SDL development. So now instead of having to go to Ford and then go to Toyota and then go to Peugeot, you'll have one spot where you can start your development for all of the different vehicles that are going to be using it around the globe. You'll be able to get a, an app ID, which will be valid for any of the participants that you saw. Just like on the, the Ford.com or developer.ford.com, you'll have all of your resources available to you. Um, we've actually inhaled the GitHub that we've been using for a while and the SDL community. So you've got those tools right there. If you're on Slack, you should jump on the Slack channel for SDL. We've got a huge group of devoted uh, helpers around the globe. A few of them are here in the audience. I won't call them out, but they're here. So if you type something into Slack, you might get an answer from somebody sitting right next to you. All of these things are there for you guys as developers. We want feedback from you as well. We want to know what's working. We want to know what we can do better because it's a tool for you, it's a resource for you. We want to make sure that everything that you guys have at your disposal is going to be making it easier for you to get your content into the vehicle. The SDL developer site is going to grow and is going to evolve and as Toyota gets prepared to, to launch their own developer site, as the other uh, Honda, Subaru, those guys, you'll be able to link out from the SDL site directly and get the information that is specific to that vehicle line. So when you want to know about the Ford templates in Sync 3 and how do I do a media template, then you can just go jump right from the SDL site right into your account on our site seamlessly, get all that information, finish up your application, submit it, have it validated, boom, it's on the screen. I mean, it really is that simple, isn't it? So we've got a number of new things specific to Ford that are going to be around as well. We just announced that we've got the ability, we're offering you the ability, to take advantage of the navigation in the vehicle. So now an application can send a POI, can send a route 
right into the navigation unit. So when you're trying to find a restaurant, when your application is finding a hotel, uh, that fuel app, if you're building a fuel app, now you can send that route to the navigation unit and it will take over and navigate them to the spot that, that you sent from your app. That's never been available for before. It's brand new. Soon to follow after that is the ability for you to have a navigation route in the vehicle even if the vehicle doesn't have navigation in the head unit. Again, we kind of scare some of the other OEMs when we do this stuff, but this is a huge component and a huge capability for a developer because while we want everybody to buy a vehicle with navigation in it, we understand that today's drivers, especially our younger drivers, are using navigation on their devices. And that's not safe. We don't want you picking up your phone or sticking your phone on the edge of the cup holder or you know, hanging it from the visor, whatever it is. So now we're going to give you the opportunity to say, I've got a route, I'm going to take over the screen and I'm going to show the route from the device right on the screen. So the vehicle itself doesn't have to have navigation in it at all. You're commanding that, you're controlling that. Again, another huge capability. It is a capable in SDL, so our, our friends in the SDL community will be able to do it as well. But I'm here talking about Ford and we're doing it first, so there. So more vehicle data. I showed you a number of different pieces of vehicle data that you can get already. We're going to be making more available to you. There are about 300, 350 different signals running around a CAN bus. Again, another term I had to learn when I came into the automotive industry, CAN bus. If you don't know it, look it up. I had to look it up. Nobody wanted to tell me. But there are all kinds of signals in a vehicle. Signals that you wouldn't think you would want to do something with. But when you get access to it, you're like, oh, I can do something really cool with that. So as this evolves, we're going to be making more things available to you. We never want to stop creating tools. We never want to stop giving resources to our developer community because, again, that's where the innovation comes from. And then, of course, more vehicles. Not only are we putting out more vehicles at Ford with Sync 3 in it, but all of our friends in the SDL community as well. As those other members that are in the investigation stage put it into their vehicles, we'll have more announcements from other large OEMs that you maybe didn't see on that list, increasing the capabilities. So the idea that in four or five years, you can create an application that could be running in 150 or 200 million, ve 200 million vehicles around the globe is not far off. It, it, it's right there. And that's a huge opportunity. There's a lot of time, we call it windshield time, you know, when you're in the vehicle and you don't want your life to be separated. So if it's an appropriate thing to do in the vehicle, that's what this is going to be able to, to enable for our owners and for you as developers to say, hey, I don't want them to stop listening to music. I don't want them to stop uh, utilizing their messaging when they get into a vehicle. So now, whether they're on a Ford, in a Ford vehicle, which I know 95% of you are in Ford vehicles, of course, and then the 5% that are in those other vehicles, your stuff will still just work in their vehicles. So to recap, opportunity. We want to embrace the developer community. We want to give you the resources and tools to be successful. And we want you to come do cool stuff with us. So we've actually got a booth. If you go through that door and then kind of make a right and then a left and then a right, exactly like that, you can see the Ford booth. I'm inviting you all to come by the Ford booth. Tomorrow we're actually going to be starting a hackathon uh, where developers that have registered are going to get all of those vehicle pieces of vehicle data. We've got some really cool test bench units that look like glorified karaoke machines, but it's actually a vehicle test unit. It thinks it's a car. If you were to put wheels on it, I honestly think it would drive away. And you can do karaoke on it, as a matter of fact. 
Don't ask me how I know. But, I mean, I do have a Britney Spears microphone on, so. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to be doing a hackathon. I encourage you guys to come by and check it out. We've actually got some recruiters over there. If you want to do something in the automotive industry and you want to be part of this change that we're promoting and we're pioneering, by all means, stop by and say hello. Uh, they're there to talk and kind of see what your interests are and see if you've got something that could match up with you know, what we're doing. We've got a whole number of uh, engineers here who have actually built the AppLink product and are integrated into the vehicle and work with all of you guys in the developer community. Please stop by, poke them on the shoulder really hard and say, tell me everything you know about AppLink. I swear it'll last 30 seconds, maybe 45 seconds, and then they'll be like, eh, that's all I really know. And then they're going to be mad at me for telling you guys to go poke them. But that's okay. I can live with that. So we want you to come by. We want you to check everything out. We've got a couple of vehicles there that you can check out as well. Um, a lot of cool things going on. And we want you guys to come innovate with us. Developer.ford.com to come see what we're doing. Start yourself a little profile. Get in there. Start messing around. When you get into trouble, come poke one of our guys on the shoulder and ask him, you know, what the hell's going on here? Why doesn't this work? And that's all the fun stuff that I have for today. We are going to take a couple of minutes. To, if you guys have any questions, I will dodge them and, and pretend to answer them, but not really answer them. And I will bring up, where's it, Don? This way, if you don't want to ask a question in English, he can answer it. Bueno, 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 bueno. Vamos a hacer una serie de preguntas. Si ustedes levantan la mano, yo con mucho gusto voy y les paso el micrófono. Hola. Um, hello, Scott. Um, en español, vamos a ver en español. Um, una pregunta. Eh, ¿SDL va a integrar todo lo que es el self-drive testing? Es decir, que el autocontrol de los vehículos. ¿Cuál es la estrategia de Ford? The self-drive testing. Drive testing? Yeah, right. Yes, self we definitely test everything. No, self, self-drive, driving. Self-driving? Oh. Self, so autonomous vehicles? I don't have, they don't let me touch the vehicle, so I don't know anything about the autonomous vehicles, unfortunately. They're going to be really cool when they come out, that I know. Uh, about communication, what is your chipset vendor? Qualcomm? Your partner? Yeah. Yeah, I, b I believe it's a Snapdragon, yeah. Thank you. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna start calling out the AppLink team to answer these questions if they if they don't stop laughing at me. So it's called where where can I sign? So uh, developer.ford.com. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> developer.ford.com. Okay, I'm very excited about all, everything that you said before, and I think that that um, yeah, I, I can I can be with with you guys. But uh, what do you think about uh, about the oil and about the uh, in combustion uh, machines? So the motors of uh, internal combustion. I'm sorry, I can't hear. Of it, I'm sorry. Internal. Uh, Combustion engines, yeah. So like combustion versus electric. Yeah, so Ford have a have a thing of fifty years with the with the same with the same sister, or do you want to change like Tesla, or do you want to change like another electric solutions? What do you what what is it? What is it Ford thing in fifty years? Um, well, we'll go back to autonomous vehicles as well. I mean, honestly, we. We kind of cover all the bases, and we believe that there's going to be different, you know, different needs for different parts of the world. Um, obviously, we've got full electric vehicles right now already on the road. We've got hybrid vehicles. Um, I'm not an engineer. Definitely not an engineer here. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, we, obviously we're going to be going along with, we're ahead of the curve on a lot of the different things in the electric vehicles. Um, Tesla, you know, is, is a very formidable company, but they're also learning the automotive industry, which is a little bit harder than, you know, than some of the things that, you know, they're making devices. But yeah, we, there'll definitely be more vehicles, electric vehicles. There will definitely be autonomous vehicles. Um, that's as much as I know, because <laughs> they just let me play with apps. They don't. They don't let me near the cars. <laughs> um, oh, uh, I know that you were telling me, uh, were telling us some of the advantages of using SDL because it's compatible with a lot of brands and stuff like that. But what is another advantage of using SDL, uh, especially because Android Auto and Apple. Um, OS, uh, car OS, it's also compatible with a lot of cars. What mm -hmm. is the advantage of using SDL uh, on top of those other two systems? Sure, uh, there's a couple of different things. One of them being, you get, to, you get to choose from all those different templates to create your experience. When you have one of those third party solutions, the way that your app looks is what they want it to look like. It's going to look like their UI. You don't, and you can't change that and you can't control that. We offer, again, about 30, 35 different templates and you can change, you can make things in there so that you can, con you can control your branding of your application. Additionally, all of those pieces of vehicle data that I showed you are not available through those third-party solutions. So the only way to get them is to support AppLink so that we can help you and we can ensure that it's being done the right way. And then, you know, the, one, of the, one of the final pieces is not, not every device, and I view the car as a device, not every device has the same layout and the same implications for the OS UI. And that's a really, conf that's, I confuse myself by saying it. Basically, iOS doesn't look great on every device. Because if it did, then iOS for TV would be a huge hit by now. There are some devices where your user experience is more based on the device than the OS, and the vehicle is one of those. You get accustomed to how your vehicle looks, how your screen looks and your buttons and things, and you don't want to change that experience because that's part of the safety of driving and that's part of the, what we call muscle memory of making a, you know, making a touch. So. The whole point of SDL is it, it marries the two together. Is it marries your content and how you have you been using an application, so your habit. So you, the way that we look at it is you build a habit outside of the vehicle. So Spotify, for instance, or Pandora, things like the thumbs up, things like Skip or you know playlists. You, people have built the habit when they're out of the car. So when they get into the car, we want to be able to marry that habit with also the habit of how you use things in your car. And so SDL kind of does those two things together. It's, here's how I operate in the car, but here's my stuff. And so it, you, you lose that with the iOS or the, or the Android UI because it doesn't present to you what you're used to doing in the vehicle. Thank you very much. Uh, hello. Do you mention that you have uh, some of the templates? So we are going to have the, the chance to use these templates for the developer for the for the challenge. Disable for us the templates that you mentioned. What's the question? The, it, where did to you, get them? Did you mention that uh, there is uh, several templates? These templates are able for us as developers. Yes. Yes, you can find them on the developer site, developer.ford.com. They're all listed there. Sh they show you an example. We have images that show you all of them. And then to use them, when you actually build your application and you send a command, you actually decide in that command, you tell it which template to use. Okay, uh, another question. Uh, the karaoke machines are also going to be uh, able for us to use them? To yes, to use them. Yeah. Yes. Yes, that's that's exactly why they're, why they're there so that you can use them. Please do. Hello. Thank you for uh, explaining this. Uh, basically, I have one question. Uh, you're uh, bringing out uh, development platform for developers. So obviously, 
and not everyone can afford a Ford Mustang right in here. So, what is uh, exactly doing Ford for uh, you know expanding for the low, lower levels of cars for this platform? I mean, the Ford Mustang obviously supports very well, but mm -hmm. what about a, a I don't know Fiesta or another? Sure. So actually, um, Sync is the same, and an AppLink is the same. Excuse me, in every vehicle of Ford, and we actually launched AppLink on the 2011 Ford Fiesta. We didn't start on the Lincolns, we didn't start on the Mustang, we actually started on one of the lowest cost vehicles, and that kind of proved out that it doesn't matter what vehicle it's on. So when you write an application, um, you don't have to do anything different for any vehicle, and it is available, in two, especially in 2016, on the Highline Sync 3 trim. And then we've also got um, the lower end trim, which isn't the big touch screen, but it's also available on there, and it works the same, it's the same exact platform, it just, um, it's like an image. You can't send an image to the, to the lower end, but it, the, on the sync side, it's smart enough to just ignore what it doesn't need to use, so you don't have to change your code or anything. Actually, my question was more focused on uh, how many uh, models are supporting this technology, not in terms of the code, in terms of the platform, the displays, and all that stuff. How many vehicles today support it? Yeah, how many models? So every model, as for the Sync 3 portion of it, every model as they get their 2016 uh, refresh has Sync 3 in it in the US. In the rest of the world, in Europe and here in Mexico and um, South America and Asia, it's the 2017 refresh. So it's starting now. So if you're familiar with vehicles, the 2017 model your vehicles are sold in 2016. So you can buy the vehicles starting now. It says 2017 as the model year. Yeah, and there, in globally right now, there's a little over 6 million vehicles that have Sync. And that's not all Sync 3. That's on every version of Sync. And as long as your application supports Sync 3, it supports all of those other ones as well. And the last question I have, it's uh, how open is this platform to uh, interact or interconnect with the, some external devices? I mean. The vehicle itself has a lot of sensors. It provides a lot of information about the car and the driving. But uh, how about uh, the feedback from the user, user input with the devices, their own devices to the car? That's, um, so the, the most important answer to that question is you have to have some sort of native component on the device. So when I said it's, when it, when I said it's OS agnostic, uh, that's whether it's right now Android or iOS, you have to have that, that you have to be a core component that can talk to the head unit. So as long as it's got an iOS or an Android native component running on it, on any device, you can talk to it. It can be, it can be compatible. Alguien más? Scott, muchísimas gracias por haber estado aquí en Campus Party. Te lo agradezco. Un aplauso, por favor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hola. Hola, buenas tardes. Nada más recordarles que a partir de las 9 de la mañana va a haber entrenamientos con Scott y su equipo en el stand de Ford. Pueden asistir, eh, son workshops y bueno, eh, los invitamos a todos a que participen. Gracias.